But the question is, would extending opening hours make things worse or keep people off the streets? The legislation that is planned would allow pubs and restaurants to open until 12.30, seven days a week, while nightclubs would be allowed to open until 6 a.m. And I want to go to our audience first on this. Who here thinks we should get more, the pubs should be open later and there should be more uh, license, longer licensing hours? OK, yeah, I'll go to yourself first. So I have friends that work in hospitality and a lot of the time they've had to miss kind of birthday parties and events because they're finishing work so late and by the time they come out of work all the pubs are closed so I think we need to extend the opening hours. Okay and, and yourself besides? I think we're probably one of the only major capital cities in Europe that doesn't have a nightlife that kind of extends on. Now personally it wouldn't be for me, three o'clock I want to be in bed um, <laughs> but I mean I know people who could, they'd happily go all night long like the price of a taxi like, I, I come in from Bray, and if I go out in town, it costs me 50 quid for a taxi, whereas it would give people the option to get public transport on their way home because the night link only runs on a Saturday and a Friday. So for people going out in college on a Thursday, it doesn't really work unless you kind of have those later hours. OK, and of course, the whole night scene has changed so much in recent years, and so many clubs have closed. Anyone think it's a bad idea that uh, we're talking about extending? Yeah, yourself. Well, I just think it's, it's a bad idea. I think we're bad enough as we are with the drink. And I just have worked in Dublin for years and I've seen, coming into work in the morning, I've seen the remnants of the night before. I was in Dublin when the riots happened and it happened very, very quickly. There wasn't alcohol taken. But had there been alcohol taken, it would have been a completely different scene. I just think, I think we're bad enough. Why do, who wants to be staying out until all hours? You know, you won't get people going to work on Monday mornings. They, you know, no, don't agree with it. OK. Uh, OK, well, I'll stick beside you there. Uh, Hugh Wallace, you're very, very welcome. Hello. Um, you, we have you here because you have spoken openly before about uh, being an alcoholic in, in your past. Um, can you tell me a little bit about that? You know, how did you realise you had a problem and, and what impact was it having on you? Well, as an alcoholic, it's very difficult. It's very easy in Ireland to be secretive because alcoholism isn't spoken about as a disease. It is spoken about with bravado. And until we understand and accept it's a disease and we're open about it and don't pull the corner of the, of the carpet up, it remains in the family as a secret. And to me and for me, the realisation, and, and I, I can't describe how stupid I felt uh, at the age of 55 going to the doctor. And he, it, the first person who said, you're an alcoholic. And at that moment, the relief, I finally knew what was wrong with me. I know that sounds really stupid, I'm sorry about that the relief of knowing I wasn't going to die, the relief that I could get treatment and, and change my life around. And that's what happened. I was given a second chance at life, but I was lucky because I had the money to deal with it. Today, you, there is no resources. If today you decide you're going to stop drinking, you have to be able to have support at that moment. And there is none. What kind of an impact was it having on yourself and on the, the people around you? It was, it was all consuming. I, I, like, I, I can't describe, you know, when you stop drinking, you get, you get 24 hours back in a week. You, you get time, you can see the trees. Like it is, to be immersed in alcoholism is a depression. It, I can't, it's the depths of depression. Uh, obviously, you're, you're well out of it now. Yeah, look, I'm on telly. I wouldn't be on telly. You know, I'm just saying that, that the issue is that if you, hold your, if you ask this audience to hold their hands up and ask how many people here are affected by alcohol, they won't hold their hands up because of their shame. There is no shame of being an alcoholic. We have to call it out. Then society can deal with it. Society is not in a position 
to deal with alcoholism because it's under the corner of the carpet. It's in every family in this country. You don't go to, if your aunt isn't well and has cancer, you say, are you attending? Are you getting seen? But everyone knows the alcoholic in the family. and Nobody goes up to them and says, you're destroying my life. So you sort it out. You'd never do that. And until we do that, we will never resolve or deal with the issues of alcohol in this country. Okay, well then I must ask you then about this legislation, because this is going to make alcohol more available to people f for longer hours. Do you think that that's a dangerous thing? I think it's out of sequence. So be quite clear what should have happened and the, in the 2018 Act was a comprehensive act. But that act has been nibbled at by the industry. This is the Public Health uh, and yes. Alcohol Act, yeah. Yeah, so that's been nibbled at. There's supposed to be an office of, of uh, alcohol in terms of reduction of alcohol. That's not in place. Marketing is still allowed, and it shouldn't be. So there was a whole series within that act which said, yes, you can have longer opening hours. But that was on the basis you did the other things in an order. And I gave people who are suffering from alcoholism and their families and their immediate families support. There is no support in this country, and that is shameful. So you cannot deal with the problem if there's no outcome or support for people to actually go and, and receive treatment, and it's acknowledged. OK. OK, thank you, Hugh, for coming in and sharing your own story with us in particular. Uh, I want to bring in Porik O'Hora now. How are you, Porik? Not too bad, yourself. And welcome, Roisin, there, your partner be beside you. Uh, people, of course, at home will know you if they're interested at all in, in GAA from uh, Mayo Football. But you also work with Youth Work Ireland and you're a community liaison officer for Mayo Mental Health. Um, you stopped drinking yourself some years ago. Why? Similar, similar story, I suppose. Um, I just understand the damage it does. I think anybody that grows up in Ireland has seen the impacts, be it in their own house or in their own family or somebody down the road. So I suppose it was a decision we made after a couple of years um, to make sure it didn't impact our house the way it has other people. You were a bit worried yourself, weren't you, about you know, how you were getting on with drink at that age? Yeah, I think I'm like most people there. Uh, it just didn't suit me. Certainly didn't suit me, and I think there's a lot of people out there like that. And uh, you see, as I now said, that's a bit of a euphemism that we talk about. It didn't suit me. What were you worried about? What? 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 I thought it just simply put me at risk. If you look at the the behaviours going on there um, on the on the Saturday night. Most nights I go out, would be absolutely sound. You'd have a grand time, but there was always risk attributed to it. Something could happen. You just don't know. And basically, I kind of made a decision that instead of taking that risk, making a mistake on a night out, getting involved in anything that you shouldn't and it impact in your household or your family. Getting it was easier to avoid it was easier to avoid it. You were a bad drinker basically. Was that what that's, that's what we say, isn't it? it? Um, so you actually decided to, to go teetotal? Yeah, it's just the easiest way to do it. Um, I suppose if you don't have it, you won't worry about it. And go back to your point, I suppose I was fortunate enough I did have the supports. My mum done the same, she stopped drinking years ago. So did other members of my family that had trouble with alcohol had my partner beside me. I had a good few people that I needed and obviously being involved in the GA helps again then too. Um, OK, if we go on to the plan then to extend the uh, opening hours, I'm, I'm thinking particularly about this one about keeping clubs open till 6am because that would be a big change for us in this country. You're worried about that or what might happen? I am. I, like, I'm conflicted to some degree. Um, I believe in autonomy, to be honest. I think people, adults, should have their own right to make decisions. If people want to drink, they should be able to drink. Uh, we talked earlier briefly about other bills that are there, about assisted dying. Um, like, I think people have the autonomy. They should make their own decisions. If they want to drink, they want to drink. But if access is in increased, obviously, we're going to have more people drinking. And in my line of work, we see alcohol and drug use linked heavily to mental health issues, antisocial behaviour crime and that's simply obviously not what we want. I know you're also saying that in your view after 2am little good happens in, in terms of if, you, if the drinking keeps going on. Very little good happens there after 2am. I don't, I don't see the need for it personally but as I said 
I am for autonomy. I think people, adults, should be able to make their own decisions, their conscious decisions, but yeah, there is obviously a risk. Hugh touched there on marketing. I know you have a particular issue with the amount of uh, marketing there is around alcohol-free drinks. Well, I think it's just a loophole. Like, the government are looking at different bits and pieces that they can bring in. You're looking at this legislation. I think there's a loophole in regards to advertising. Uh, big alcohol brands are utilising sports to, to market and advertise. You touched on it earlier. Just because they put a zero zero sign beside Guinness or Heineken or any of them, they're still marketing and advertising off sports. And it's incorrect and something should certainly be done about it. What should we do about it? Ban it. <laughs> in Just simple totally terms. ban all, all marketing. I think so, yeah. Uh, in regards okay. to sports, anyway. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Parag. And thanks again, Hugh, for that.